So as mentioned before, this is not going to be independent suspension. This is just going to be the main bar here, and it'll pivot like that. There's my shocks. They're well hidden within the body to eliminate wind resistance. And that was the whole idea. Here you got three positions. Here's for the lighter guy to the heavier guy. <laughs> Prior to this axle, straight axle beam, I was going to put this V1 in there. I got a little carried away with the depth of the V. And I kind of like the idea of just having the straight tube. It adds a lot of strength, simplifies things. But it does grab a hold of the uh, kingpin housing there. Low. I can add a little um, gusset on the top, I'd imagine. Might play with that idea. So this is my old rack and pinion steering. Came off my old trike. Um, I took some uh, angle iron, steel, welded on some ends. And what I'll end up doing to this is putting some tabs right in the center here. And that's where the uh, lime joints will attach to, connect to the steering arm on both sides. Currently, they would come out here. So basically, I'm just lengthening the uh, actual steering rod. And that'll help make less uh, toe-in and toe-out when you go into hitting a bump or joust, as they call it. That's bolted onto some angle iron. And this guy bolted onto here. This is all temporary right now. Okay. So in essence, what we have now so my two hymen joints will be here, hymen joints. And they'll be about two and a half inch travel each way. But this way I'm going to be able to have a steering wheel and have a lot more control. If it was just a, or a traditional kind of go-kart style, it would be very twitchy steering. That's why I've opted for this big mess. This thing weighs about six pounds. Ugh. I wish I could make it simpler. Here I'm um, lining up my steering arm with my kingpin. This is how you do it with reverse trikes or uh, pad pole configuration trikes. So the arm that I attached here is actually the length that will work out pretty good. This is now in uh, full left turn mode. I am going with this as it's going to bang into here and it's at full extension on the rack and pinion steering. And I got a center point here to there. That's two and a quarter inches, and I measured two and a quarter inches here from this point to there. So that's not too bad. That's about as far as I want the wheel turned. I don't want it any further. It's a short wheelbase, so it'll have a tight turning radius as it is. It'll fit right in there. Let's go make some um, steering arms with some 3 16 steel plate. Okay. Got my steering arms, roll of holes. So currently this is set up to where I would be in the vehicle going down the road. So right now I'm concentrating on uh, what angle I'm going to put this guy at. So what I'm trying to do is have this point here one inch lower than this point here. So when this goes into a two inch joust, 
it'll do just an arc and it'll give the least amount of um, flutter with the wheel. Oh, here's my little plant stick. This is all rough, of course. Let's come down a little. Oh, look at that. And I'll attack weld this guy to the steering knuckle assembly. So again, this is just a mock-up, but I do believe we have success. Now I'll go ahead and uh, make the real angle iron uh, steering box mount and get that on the frame. So there's a reason why you tack weld your pieces on before you start going for the full blown welds. You never know when holes are going to be out of alignment like these. God, you think I'd know better? I've done this, I don't know how many times, or tuck it all down, and now I got it. Oh. It pisses me off sometimes. The good thing's all over again. This is on there pretty good. Oh, I doubt if I could even rescue it. Oh, I got lucky. So I'm about to cut my steering tie rods. This is half inch OD by quarter inch ID, eighth inch thick wall. I had to find this uh, at uh, Metal Depot online. Later found it at my supply place, one big piece. Uh, tucked way back and I didn't see it, but so I paid premium price for this. But anyway, we're going to start uh, threading the ends. Tap magic. Every shop's got to have tap magic. Well, I just welded down the axle beam here in the uh, 12 or 13 degree inclination it needs to be in. I got my tie rods hooked up. I'm kind of curious to know how all this panned out. And there you go. I think there's going to still be a little tweaking to be done. I may have to bring up this uh, steering arm here. It seems to be touching the frame here. Once again, prototype wheel. That might be good right there. I like that. Okay, this is the third time now that I've had to uh, cut and readjust the steering arms on the front beam here. Um, this time I'm hoping it'll work. I'm trying to get, you know, my inner wheel to turn a lot further than the outer wheel and track along. Uh, with all wheels in alignment as you go so you don't get a lot of front tire scrub. Uh, I tried the string technique from here to the center of the tire but then you've got your kingpin at a slight angle and it's hard to figure out where exactly to line uh, where the kingpin post is to the actual uh, 
point contact where the steering rod hits. So anyway, I'm bringing in, bringing in. The dimensions are getting a little better and better. So hopefully this will be it. Now I have to again short my tie rod up, which kind of sucks because I've already drilled these out. I have to be very careful not to, when I re-drill and make them a little deeper, to, uh, you know, wear out some of the thread lining on the beginning of the tube. Anyway, stuff you run through. I've got some parallel lines running here. I got this wheel run here. Got a little mark here. Right now I'm just trying to figure out how much I need to cut off the steering arm. So now, lining this guy up. It's like I need to trim off about oh, three quarters of an inch. So here I've laid out the uh actual intersecting lines not perfect but not too bad i'm going with it this is a 15 foot radius 